I just stopped Virgo's groove for y'all. So you know I love you because I love that song. <laughs> okay, so anyways, I wanted to come on here really quick because I had a thought. So um, I was... What was I doing? What was I just thinking about? Oh, right. I was thinking about... Okay, so you know how I love to talk about the incarnating being and how we need some more advocacy for us in the spiritual realm and blah, 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 blah. And just recognizing, for me, I don't know if this is a specific experience with my soul or if this is how it is for everyone, right? But I personally feel that I am a separate being or entity from my soul um and my soul and I are one and we are the same and blah 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 but we're also separate and I Zanala am like a very specific being that will never exist again versus who my soul is that's why one of the first questions I asked when I was meditating when I was first beginning to meditate intentionally and I first started this whole spiritual journey I asked for the name of my soul because I didn't think it was my name, obviously. Um, I don't know why that would be obvious, but I didn't. And I recognize that we're separate, right? Like I'm gonna go on to have my own existence as an ancestor after this lifetime. Um, And my soul will go on to do whatever they're gonna go on to do. And just learning about the way that souls work in the spiritual realm, it's just got me thinking, you know? that we're quite separate and so I was thinking about what the narrative is around spirituality right now and how to live in your best light your energy the best energy for your life and it's very much so centered around the soul and letting your soul be free and letting your soul guide you and all of these things and it's framed in this way that makes you think that the incarnating being is fighting against the soul right and that our shadows come out and um, our egos and all of these things and it prevents the soul from being able to live fully in their bliss but I don't know if I agree I think that the incarnating being is incredibly powerful I think me myself as a separate entity dis like separated from my soul I think I'm very powerful I think I have the ability to function without my soul I think many people do it all the time (laughs) but I don't think it's us that fights off the soul I think it's the soul that fights right because that's what makes the most logical sense it's the soul that decides that they want to come down here not remembering what it's like and then they come down there here and they're like what the fuck so then they're like "Eh, mm," and they go back up to the higher realms because souls are able to do that they're able to move between realms very easily and so that's why when they're saying your higher self they're talking about your soul um or that higher perspective and it needing to be grounded in the 3d in the physical we're never going to leave the 3D while we are incarnating and we shouldn't want to because it's a part of the incarnating experience and that's how we exist as incarnating beings for majority of our existence. I'm just like a little embarrassed to be talking about this out in public but anyways yeah but I feel like the the ego and the shadow and all of that that they talk about in connection to the soul, I feel like that comes from the soul, not from people. And the reason I feel that I feel that way is because the shadow is like representative of this darkness energy, right? And people say um, this defensive energy, this energy that's dealing with trauma and karma, this energy that protects, this energy that is very earthbound, but. It's also an energy that feels very spiritual, and it would make sense that people, that the shadow comes from the spiritual realm and actually comes from souls, right? Because that's where all the the past life karma comes from and everything. That makes sense, right? I feel like it makes sense. Because I saw 222 and I saw 444, and when I'm recording messages and I'm unsure of myself, that's kind of how I, like, feel like I'm on a good track. And I feel like 
my soul's letting me say this very openly for a reason and very like and giving me signs that I'm on a good path for a reason and I was speaking about before how like I think that I've lived many lifetimes at this point I think I've I have a pretty well-versed soul in terms of experiences and um what I'm realizing is that the higher up you get in incarnations the tougher it is in the spiritual realm because we all know being too light being too high being all of that is a burden very quickly it needs to be balanced darkness needs to exist and for so many souls they've completely abandoned their egos and their shadow because it's been marked as this thing that is like almost like it's kind of marked as something that's lower class like if you still have a shadow or if you still have an ego as a soul you're like lesser than or you're not as evolved it's very much so it mirrors all of the things around the shadow and the ego in relation to the soul and all the things around darkness and light all of that really mirrors the different discriminations that we have here on earth like classism racism sexism all of that it's mirrored and so that's what exists in the spiritual realm in terms of the way that people talk about darkness and the soul and your and your ego and all of that and so there's a need for the soul to recognize that this is actually coming from them and not from us as incarnating beings and to stop putting all the blame on us because incarnating beings are so strong that we will push through anyways and help souls fix all of their shit and then die and like become an ancestor but like with like little to no thank you and not from like the spiritual realm like from our spirit guides and things like that but from our soul you know where's the thanks from our soul you know and there's like that's why I've been talking about ancestors so much because there's almost this need for like souls to go back and look at all of the lifetimes that they've had through getting reconnected with those ancestors that because those they all still exist everybody's an ancestor who's ever lived right so go back to all of their ancestors at this point and like thank them and honor them and that's why we've been talking about honoring your ancestors in this lifetime so much and trying to get more attached with uh, the earth because that's where we come from as incarnating beings like this is our home this is our spiritual realm you know and we're not any lesser than just because we're not like up floating with the stars and the cosmos you know what i mean earth is a part of outer space earth is a part of the universe earth is a part of the spiritual realm um but there are these strict definitions that separate us and put us at these levels of like evolution that just aren't real and it kind of mirrors the whole um like problem with eugenics and the evolution narrative that spoke about you know some people not being human or some people being lesser than or not being deserving of human rights because of some random wacky science thing and you can see a lot of the ways in which religion or in which spirituality and science mirror each other and this morning i was thinking about queen nefertiti and i was thinking about how she and um, the pharaoh Akhtan, I don't remember, I don't remember his name, um, but they were, I think, the first, or one of the Egypt, they are known for, like, having a soul god, and it was the sun god, Aten. I'm probably butchering this, I don't remember it all very clearly, but that sounds a lot like when we discovered that the sun was the center of the solar system in science, doesn't it? Like, so... I feel like I see a connection there, like having the soul god and it being the sun god, and then having, uh, discovering that, you know, earth isn't the center, but the sun is the center of the galaxy and of our solar system, and is the reason for all of these gifts and life all around us. I feel like that makes sense, that there's a connection there. And, I mean, those are ancient times, right? But the book, the huge library in Alexandria was burned down um, in Egypt by who? The Romans? The Italians? I don't know. I don't know, really, honestly. But um, I 
I'm kind of going all over the place now. But if essentially, I am just thinking that our souls need to take a little bit more responsibility and accountability for their experience here on Earth. Because it's always put on us. And it's like, oh, you didn't do all of this. You didn't do all that. So now in the next life, you'll have to do this. And they're like, oh, we're not blaming you. You know, it's okay. It's really hard down here. But it's like, bitch, you didn't do this. You know, you chose to come down here. Whatever you didn't make happen, you didn't make happen. Right? That's not on me as an incarnating being. Yet, as ancestors, we do carry the fucking weight. And it affects our entire ancestral line. And we don't even get to have a full understanding of what happened. Only our soul gets to have that knowledge. We still have to walk through this world blind. Or you don't have to. You can get access to information and things like that. But your soul decides that. It's like everything is run by the soul. And yet there's not enough responsibility put on the soul to take care of the incarnating being. If your life is a mess as an incarnating being your soul is accountable for that and that's why there needs to be a distinction between the soul and the incarnating being because it's not entirely your fault and yes I mean this is your world and your life so you're the one that's you know you're ruling it but just in spiritual context you have every right to kind of call in your soul and be like what the fuck I feel like so this is why we need to establish our autonomy also so that we can recognize that we deserve our own separate voice in the spiritual realm. Um, yeah, this bus is taking a long ass time. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, that's the thought that was coming to mind that I wanted to share. So I don't think I have anything else to say. If I do, I shall come back and let you know. Bye. Hello, just piggybacking off of my previous thoughts. I was thinking about the fact that I've recently been finding feathers. Um, and they're feathers of birds that are local to Canada and to my neighborhood. Um, I live in Ontario. And in my neighborhood, <laughs> there's lots of pigeons as there are in many cities. Um, and I found a feather that didn't look like a pigeon feather. I think it might belong to an owl or a hawk. I couldn't specify. I couldn't figure out which one. But I was just thinking about the fact that when it comes to spirituality, a lot of what's championed is the like more exotic, um, the more exotic representatives of nature, <laughs> especially when it differs from what is around you. So like pigeon feathers for example are not given you know the highest rank of spiritual bliss and um uh power compared to like an ostrich feather or something that you would have to go buy rather than something you would find along your path and even if a thousand pigeon feathers laid out um you know along your path were laid out along your path you probably would not think to pick them up and take them as a gift from earth, from the birds, from pigeons, rather than if you were to find, you know, some more less everyday looking feather. Um, and it makes me think about the way that we're kind of subtly being prepped by this expression or exploration of spirituality to look at um, look at foreign things and look at exotic things and things that come from outside of yourself as more highly valued and more important and um, giving you access to a greater form of spirituality than what you can find in your neighborhood. It's the same way that we've seen this conversation grow around people coming into lands that they're not indigenous to, at least not in this lifetime, um, in cultures that they're not indigenous to in this lifetime at least, um, and kind of basing their entire spirituality around that, um, versus going to their homelands, to the lands of their ancestors in this lifetime, and 
discovering, you know, what that connection to spirituality looks like, what their practices are and their traditions are. We've seen it happen a lot in on islands, on small islands or in more tropical, warm places that would have been considered third world, right? Like a couple, like a decade ago. So we're seeing it happen in Tulum. We're seeing it happening um, in different cities in Costa Rica, in DR, um, all across the Caribbean, really. It's starting to happen across the African continent. It's been happening in Brazil and South America and it's happening in Portugal uh, so different places in Bali places like that so going outside of yourself going to the exotic going to what is foreign to you to establish spiritual dominance Um, and it's funny because we're using places that up until a few years ago were considered dangerous considered scary um, seen as the opposite of like abundance and uh, progression not these places are being prepped to be the basis of this spiritual movement that's happening only the way that we're doing it it is exploitive and rooted in colonialism uh and gentrification so that's why there's also been this push to tell people go explore your indigenous heritage we're all indigenous to somewhere and every place on earth every homeland has a story to tell and a spiritual practice connected to um, where you come from and it's important to look at those practices and not see yours as lesser than or as not being able to provide some amount of information and I will say that just particularly calling out white people in this instance who do go to more exotic places you know I've heard a lot of complaints around well our history was lost you know there's not a lot of information around white spiritual practices and I have to say that I think that that is an excuse and a crutch because black people can say the same thing black people of the diaspora you know we don't all know what specific lands and tribes we come from and even if you do like an ancestry test you can't find out your specific tribe in order to understand what your past ancestors did you know that is hard that is information that's kind of lost in the physical and so what you have to do is use that spirituality to uncover the truth and if everybody is an expert at channeling and accessing the akashic records and basically this huge spiritual guru then everyone should be able to access information that has been lost here in the 3d so saying that you know we just don't have the info is an excuse for colonialism and it's irresponsible and it's spiritual violence because you're not honoring the roots of the practice that you are using to heighten your own spiritual experience on this planet It's also the same as, you know, advocating. I just want to touch these flowers. Hello. Look at these flowers. (laughs) Aren't they pretty? I'm like out of breath. I'm walking. Um, I think it's quite similar to... um, Sorry, I have to catch my breath. (sighs) Um... um, What was I saying, God? Oh my God, look at that tree. Trees are so cool. This tree looks like a whole person. It's like wearing a dress of leaves (laughs) all over the trunk. I haven't seen something like that before. I'll show you. Uh, I'm so excited to have my own home because 
I'm going to have a garden in the front. Like, my lawn is just going to be like a jungle. Because they said that lawns are kind of like the most wasted space. Oh my god, look. The bees love them. Look. It's like the whole trunk is covered with leaves. Anyways, um, honestly, I can't remember what I was saying. So I'll come back when I have more thoughts. Bye. Hi. I think I remember um, what I was trying to say. I was thinking about how it's important for us as incarnating beings to help our soul get integrated into the 3D in this lifetime and feel comfortable and safe here. And by helping our soul remember that the 3D is actually a beautiful dimension to exist within, we help them merge with their shadow. Because right now, it's kind of like we are an incarnating being, right? So it's me, and then in between me and my soul is the shadow, which is really our soul's shadow but instead of getting to meet our soul in relation to the shadow it's more like this soul is like this separate being I mean yeah this soul is like this separate being from their shadow rather than being merged together as one you know what I mean and so the way that we are like you should be one with your soul we need to also encourage our souls to be one with the darkness and one with their own shadow as an incarnating being okay you know what I'm thinking of is whenever I talk to my dad about um life and things like that he is he was raised in like the christian faith so it's one lifetime and before you're born you're nothing after you're born after you die you're nothing and that's his spiritual lens and i used to always fight him on it because i was like no you know there's all of this other stuff but If everything is true, then everything is true because everything exists. Which means just truth in its simplest form lends itself to everything, to every thought. So there's truth in that. And I guess what I'm thinking about is when it comes to being an incarnating person, it's true that you exist and that's simply it and then you die and there's nothing. So, before existence, there is no shadow, you know, there is no ego, you're born, you're